myself and uh, we'll get started. The first, actually, I'd, I'd like to first of all mention we're going to delete item three from the agenda. Um, John Picorni has uh, uh, informed us that he, for personal reasons he can't take the appointment as fire marshal. He will remain as deputy fire marshal. Uh, so um, I make a motion to amend the agenda to delete item three. I'll second it. All in favor? Okay, so we will go on to the first item on the agenda of the minutes of the last meeting on October 6th. Any comments, corrections, or? Not here. All good. I move to approve the minutes of the October 6th meeting. Second here. Second for Nick. All in favor? All right. Public comments. Members of the public are welcome to provide comments to the board on the agenda topic schedule for review and or vote. Comments shall be submitted by email. This is a virtual meeting on Zoom and um, comments, any comments by email should be sent to BOS distribution at newcananct.gov and we will read them if they're received in the course of the meeting. Um, so let's, um, Tucker, let's. I'm monitoring that. Let's monitor for any comments and we'll read them before the end of the meeting. Therefore going to item four, Uncollectible taxes is Roseanne here. Who's presenting? Uh, Linda. I see Ro Roseanne. Oh, Roseanne. Roseanne's here. She's. She's need on mute. Roseanne. She's on mute. Yeah, she was talking to us earlier because she's on with her phone. There she goes. Hi. Now you can hear me, right? Yes. yes. Good morning, Rob. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, the tax collector's office would like your approval to move $19,025.61 from its active file to its suspense file for these uncollectible accounts. Could you explain that for a little more? Sure. These are accounts that are from ground list 2011, 2012, and then our personal property is from ground list 2016 where we have tried statutorily to do everything we can in order to collect these funds, but somehow or other, we're just not receiving those, those funds. So we just like to remove them from the current books and put them in our suspense file. This does not mean that we are going to stop uh, collecting them. These are still gonna be with the collection agency they're going to continue to pursue them because we have to for 15 years. So we just like to remove them from current books. Any questions for Roro? Uh, Roseanne, it's Kathleen. I'm just wondering after 2012, I guess, for the motor vehicle, so from 2013 up until currently, how much is in the, um, in the account right now in terms of uh, not to suspend, but your current outstanding accounts? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I would be able to look that up and get back to you on that. Is that okay? Oh, sure. No, that's fine. So typically it's you wait the number of years, in this case, you know, eight or nine years before you transfer, you do everything you can, but before it transfers uh, to suspense or to credit collections. And so is that really, so maybe next year we'll see 13 and 14. Is that, is that typically? Correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's correct. That's okay. usually what we do. Okay, terrific, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? None here. I move we approve the request from the tax collector to transfer uncollectible taxes to the suspense tax book as uh, set forth by Roseanne and as set forth in our tablets. Second. Total of 19,025.61. Second, further discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's approved unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Roseanne. Thank you. Who's doing this, Tiger? Uh, Maria will take the MS4. Good morning. As part of the town's requirements under the Connecticut Deep General Permit, as a municipal separate storm sewer system, which is also known as an MS4, we're required to prepare an annual report documenting our efforts to adhere to the requirement of the general permit. The town's GIS and MS4 consultant, Ty and Bond, submitted a proposal for preparing the MS4 2020 annual report. Also included in the proposal is field work monitoring. 
based on previous screening efforts, outfall screening, sampling, monitoring for six outfalls out of the 174 stormwater outfalls Ty and Bond has identified in the town um, is needed this year. Ty and Bond's MS4 annual report will include meeting with the town to discuss MS4 plan goals, preparing the annual report, and completing a transmittal for Connecticut Deep. Ty and Bond's outfall screening sampling will include site visits, recording results for inclusion in the above mentioned MS4 report. Ty and Bond will perform this work for a lump sum fee of $14,500. And we recommend that the contract be awarded to Ty and Bond for $14,500 and the funds are currently available. Questions for Maria? I have a question. Sure. Why do we outsource this? Does everyone outsource their M S4? We yeah, well, it's a very comprehensive annual report. And yes, a lot of municipalities, actually Ty and Bond is, is um, working on a number of municipalities uh, annual reports. It's comprehensive um, and it's time consuming and it would definitely take resources away from our normal activity. So it is very typical and normal to outsource this annual reporting. And they also have um, a pulse really on what's going on with Connecticut Deep, which is nice and helpful for us. And there are a th third party independent contractor, basically. So it's a, it gives us a little added support. My, my next question is what is an outfall? An outfall? So we have uh, 174 of them um, documented and that's basically any location where water leaves our storm sewer system and enters a tributary or a river within town. So you'll see them as sometimes um, piped end, sec ex excuse me, end sections, um, sometimes actually more stabilized with a riprap pad, um, but it's basically where the point where water from our system enters our tributaries and our rivers, our water bodies. I'll just um, also, I'll maybe just uh, mention that Tiger and I chatted about this yesterday and I understand that this is maybe the fifth year that uh, Tiger and Bond has been performing this uh, annual report for us, is that correct? It's actually the um, ninth year, Kathy. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, that's yeah, it's, it's, we're it's in the second set years. of permits. Okay. Yeah. And and the um, and the fourteen thousand five hundred has been fairly constant, or in fact, maybe has come down in terms. It of has time. it yeah. has come down actually because some of the heavy lifting was done in the beginning because they had to do all the field work to identify those hundred and seventy four mm -hmm. um, outfalls. So yes, so the price is actually a little bit reduced this year, and as in past years. Thank you. Sure. It's actually called the storm sewer system, separate storm sewer system. So the MS4 is a tongue twister. It's the municipal separate storm sewer system. So it's to clarify that it's a storm sewer, obviously not a sanitary sewer. Um, years and years and years ago, we have separated our storm from our sanitary, but they're both uh, anecdotally known as sewers. So it's pretty important to clarify it's a storm sewer system. Right. There are some municipalities that still have combined systems where sanitary and storm are combined together. We, do not. we do not. We have it. It's, yep. it's separate for us. So technically all the drainage pipes throughout town off the roads are storm sewer. Correct. Correct. Pipes. Okay. Well, now that we become educated in this, maybe we should vote on it. <laughs> I'm sure, Nick, you, you understand this. Yeah, I've been here for 10 years, so <laughs> this is... I move that we approve a request from DPW to enter into a contract with Ty and Bond for 14.5 to prepare the municipal separate storm sewer system 2020 annual report and to conduct outfall screening, sampling, and monitoring at six specific stormwater outfalls. Second here. Question, uh, it's a discussion. All in favor? Okay. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Tiger? Uh, the next is the Waveney House renovations. Uh, what we, we went out to bid, we actually went through an extensive uh, uh, selection through 
um, or designed through um, with a building committee, a separate committee that was uh, formulated. Uh, we put together some requirements that we were looking for, um, utilized KSQ uh, as an architect and went out to bid for three separate phases of the accessibility for Waveney House, one being the elevator, second being accessible bathrooms, and the third being access in and around the building itself. Uh, it was determined that access coming in through the western uh, porch, uh, there was an existing ramp there that was not compliant. So the thought was to uh, change that grade, make it more of a sidewalk, no longer a ramp, and slope it into the western porch and then change the, the access through the, the doors there into the building. Through our consultant, um, our code consultant, it was determined that we needed access out of the building onto the loge area and the back porch. Uh, and then our fire marshal determined that we needed um, some upgrades due to the nature of the work that we were doing. We needed some upgrades to the existing fire escape leading from the second floor down um, for the back porch, the back patio. Uh, so we went out to bid, received two bids, Alden Bailey being the low bid. Alden Bailey was the contractor who did the roof, did a fantastic job, knows the building very, very well. Uh, and then we were for, faced with the fact that we were looking at what to do with the building and access and uh, or usage issues as far as the building goes. Common denominator through the entire thing is that what, whatever we determined to do with Waveney House, we need access in and around the building. So the thought was to take the third phase of work, which was that uh, set of work and bring it to the forefront to allow us to get in and around the building. Um, and then we can worry about or um, determine what the overall usage might be at Waveney House. But regardless uh, of that, we still need to get in and around. This will help us as well with our accessibility issues in the house and any uh, future complaints that we might have from the Department of Justice. So we sat with Alden Bailey, looked at their bids and uh, determined exactly the amount of work that needed to be done and uh, the cost thereof. Uh, and from there, I'll let Bill, Bill walk you through the costs of what uh, what this phase will be. Good morning, everybody. So um, doing this phase, um, it breaks down to doing the um, the uh, West Porch, um, the ADA walkway, um, the accessible doors, uh, door access, access, and then the uh, entry walkway. So what that means is basically on the west porch there where there's a current ramp there now that's not conforming they're going to slope that out to where the walkway is so it's really not a ramp no more it's actually considered a, walk, a sidewalk and it will be um, very similar to what's here at town hall when you come out of the park line you walk in the ramp it's it's the same kind of grade there so it's very subtle um it won't be so aggressive and um we think aesthetically it'll look much nicer doing that and then when you go get up onto the uh, the porch there the double doors that lead into the building right there, we have to do some work there with some ramping and change those doors to uh, make them uh, compliant. So in doing that, some of the work in phase A was the doors. We had to push to uh, this phase here in order to get compliant. Um, around the back of the building where the loja is, where the, there was the two double doors that go into the uh, living room area. Um, we had a lot of discussion over that and how to, you know, uh, treat that area uh, with respect. So we decided the best and probably most cost efficient was to raise the loggia about eight, about six inches. And this right here to be a straight walkout. And then in between the two doorways, uh, there's, a there's a green area where some plants are. There'll be a, a ramp going there to each side. So it's, you'll still be plenty of green space here to uh, plant and I don't wanna say camouflage, but it'll, you, know, you won't see the ramp from out in the field, whatever. Uh, we found that to be the best approach, the safest approach, and um, it won't take away from the, um, the aesthetics of the building at all. We'll be using the quarry tile, the same stuff. And then uh, per our fire marshal, there came discussion over the uh, egress stairs, the steel set of stairs that are outside on the porch that go up to the uh, summer bedroom upstairs there. It's non-conforming. Um, it's in need of work anyhow. Um, been there for a while. And the doorway up at the top is not conforming. So um, by, uh, the fire marshal um, looked at that and said, we have to address that for a means of egress. Um, it's, just, it's just not safe the way it is. So um, that's part of the project also. Um, so as uh, 
like I said, we have a uh, $648,000 construction cost and contingency with the request of uh, $778,000 approximately. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you uh, have any questions. So the monies please. are available. The monies are available in a previous allocation of funding. So Kathleen, we had a, a Waveney House renovation committee that worked for a year and scoped out what needed to be done. And originally we didn't know there was a phase three, but as they did their work and determined that the, the entire building, including the outside, um, had to be available since we use it for weddings and other events. And um, so the accessibility to the first floor is essential um, no matter what. The, um, the phase one and phase two, which, which haven't been funded, but will largely determine whether we can continue to use the second floor um, for both office purposes and, uh, and events. Um, you know, we had a similar issue with the town hall where basically at some level you can accommodate people up to a certain point, but beyond that, if you're going to use the <coughs> second floor, it has to be accessible. And um, so hopefully we will get to, this, to the phase of putting in common bathrooms, which really in my view is saving money because the, as a residence, there's uh, half a dozen bathrooms in the house that are not updated and don't really function well. So we will have common bathrooms. And we're looking at possibly doing a different version of the elevator if it possibly could work. Um, so that that part of the project is deferred for a while until we exhaust those investigations into a different elevator <laughs> and also get funding for the for the balance of the project. So the Select Business Advisory Committee last week um, reviewed this and with Tiger and support the project. And so I think we need to uh, consider whether we're going to proceed to do this very elemental ADA compliance work for the first floor. Go ahead, Doug. Kathleen. Just one question. Um, what's your timeline on this bill in terms of when do you think this will be completed? Well, if, uh, if we receive proposal today, we'll go to contract and um, materials have to be ordered. Uh, I don't know the timeline of materials. It's been a little bit of a challenge these days, as you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, once we get materials in hand, then we'll uh, get a construction schedule. So when you when you looked at the phasing, originally this was the third phase because of seasons. Mm -hmm. So um, you know we like to do as much as we can now and uh, by and have it all wrapped up by April. Uh, okay. And then obviously working with Steve and whatever events might be approved to have there, we'll work around that and make sure uh, we don't disturb any of that. Got it. Thank you. Any questions, Nick? Not here. Anything further, Kathleen? No. no. Thank you. I move we approve a request from DPW to enter into a contract with Alden Bailey re restoration for a total of 777.992, which includes a contingency of 129.700 for the phase three ADA exterior work at the Waving House. Um, do I have a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Tiger, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we got another building. Who's doing the buildings? I'll do this one again. I'll start it off. Uh, so this is the scale house, at the transfer station. Uh, we had originally proposed um, renovating a portion of the existing or the old incinerator building, uh, which houses our break room and restrooms for the staff at the transfer station. The uh, building is old, um, it's not in the best shape, and it's started to force us to look into some very costly uh, environmental concerns, especially considering the fact that it was an old incinerator building. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we took a better look at the, uh, at the overall scope of the project and the look of it, um, and the fact that our existing scale house um, it's a very small structure. It's basically a refurbished guard shack whereby we can have one, maybe two men in there at a time. Uh, our supervisor for the transfer station is actually housed down the hill at the wastewater treatment plant. So he's not even on site with his men. So we took a better look at the entire facility itself and determined that the best means uh, to go forward to kind of tackle all of our issues was to replace that existing scale house with a modular structure that would house scale house operations, the lunchroom and break room, um, the locker rooms, 
uh, bathrooms for our men, bathrooms for the public, since uh, that's a, that's an issue of people uh, going to the transfer station, and then actually uh, an office for our supervisor, our superintendent. So all staff are in one location at one time. Um, we went back and looked at uh, some of our existing projects that had been completed, looked to uh, sweep in some of those leftover monies, went to the Board of Finance with that purpose last week. They approved those transfers uh, of funds into one, uh, into the project that we had existing. And then went out and looked at uh, modular structures and came forward with uh, a, a structure from Vanguard that'll satisfy all of our needs. And I'll let Bill talk through the numbers right now. Yeah, I think uh, Tiger uh, pretty much covered the scope of it. And um, so the uh, Vanguard module building, I went up and looked at one. Um, it's a well-constructed building. Um, I even talked to uh, Brian Platts, our building official about it. He's, he likes those things. They are well-built. Um, this will come in uh, two sections. They'll bring it in and they'll uh, install it for us. Um, it'll be matching, the aesthetics will match what's uh, at the transfer station now. Um, the, finishes, the finishes are very durable. Uh, the building uh, is uh, 97,660, and that includes uh, the crane service to uh, set the building on the uh, pillars. Uh, site work, uh, foundation, um, tapping into utilities, uh, those types of items uh, we'll be doing ourselves. We're going to uh, GC this project to uh, keep down costs, and it's not that involved. So um, the, the overall project is approximately $173,000. Um, still, uh, and we have the funds, uh, as Tiger said, transferred to, uh, to move on to this. So what, so what's the additional cost to do this guys, as opposed to the, the prior plan? Uh, be $120,000. Okay. Tiger, you mentioned environmental concerns. That's including, yeah, that's including contingency. Nick. Okay. The, uh, okay. Um, yes. Well, to try to get in the, the walls were starting to be, or starting to deteriorate at the transfer station. It is an existing incinerator building. So in order to try to open up the area and then modify it for our use, um, we started to get into some uh, different aspects that we that we felt it would be probably better to tear that building down or to at least take the top of it off since it shares uh, the back of the building is shared with the top of the highway department. Unfortunately, the lunchroom of the highway department sits below the transfer state, the, below that existing incinerator building. Right. Right. So we're, we're gears and taking a look at actually getting rid of that building instead of actually trying to continue to um, maintain it. Yeah, I mean, it, to me, this makes sense. It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised we didn't kind of think of this earlier, um, given the well, we, issues that you raised. We uh, had, we just didn't think the town had the pallet for it at the time. The, uh, the original transfer station itself actually had a structure similar to this. And it was removed in the in the project phasing um, for it. Uh, so then we we just like I said we we determined this is the best route. Right. Any further questions, Kathleen? No. I move we approve a request from the DBW to enter into a contract with Vanguard Modular Building Systems for 97660 plus a contingency of 97666 for a total um, project of 107426 to design, engineer, and construct a modular building. Um, Second year. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. That's approved unanimously. Thank you. And then, uh, thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, um, with Tucker moving to the town, um, there's a vacancy on, that's not really true. Is there? No, um, we just had a couple of people have had to step down from TDAC over the last few months for different varying reasons. Randy Dahlia moved out of town. Um, and Laura, who now is the executive director at the chamber, um, initially, when we st started with TDAC, very much wanted to be a part of it, but we had two people representing the chamber. So at that time, um, I was the member representing the chamber. Uh, now that I'm here and we have um, a spot open, we thought it only made sense to include her, and she's thrilled to be a part of it. We're all familiar with Tucker, with Laura, and we're um, 
So I move we approve the appointment of Laura Budd to the Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Committee. This committee does not have terms. Um, so do I have a second? Second. Further discussion? Not here. Sorry, how many members are there? On the uh, T deck, eighteen. Eighteen. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You got to watch those tapes of the, uh, those uh, committee. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the problem is getting everybody all together at one time. If you were watching any of the meetings, we probably get a, an average attendance of about thirteen. I'm working on making sure that we can get as many people there as possible. It's it's a great um, mix of of people from different parts of town. Um, all in favor? That's unanimous. Legal fees are on the tablets to be approved. Any questions about the legal fees? None here. I move we approve the legal fees on the tablets. Second here. Discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Approved. Tax, tax overpayments. There's, um, I actually did not look at the overpayments, so let me quickly look. Did anybody have any questions about the tax overpayments? Typically, all... someone's moved out of town. Um, they've overpaid maybe their, their uh, or they sold their car. Yeah, 27 motor vehicles and one real estate for a total of 5,139. I move we approve the. Uh, Tax overpayments on the tablets. Second here. Discussion. All in favor? That's unanimous. Contracts under ten thousand dollars. I just had a few questions. Go ahead. On the um, what's the one uh, the exercise equipment uh, replacement parts is that in Waveney? Anybody know? I believe it's waving. Is that out in front of the? I would imagine, yeah, I would imagine it's the it's the the area next to the large um, parking lot in the middle right. of waving. Okay. The accessible the accessible um, facility itself. Okay. Uh, second question is on the lighting work on God's Acre. Okay. Is that what? What is that exactly? Is that it was small? That was a uh, up lighting for the uh, for the monument itself. Um, when we, when we went out, this, this actually stems back like pre COVID, uh, we met out there with, uh, Key Simpson associates and, um, some members from the DAR and, and, uh, the preservation Alliance and determined that it would be a nice thing to have. We had uplighting that was, that was failing on one side. So to make uplighting on all four sides to, uh, shine the monument a little bit, make it a little bit more prominent. A little less conspicuous, but a little bit more prominent. The lighting itself, a little bit more prominent. And so again, that's, that's, that's a, a town cost, correct? That was a town that's cost. A subject for ownership and so forth, but okay. okay. We've, we've maintained that area for a number of years, yeah. Okay. For as long as I've been here, let's put it that way. Okay, terrific. And then the last one I had on the evaluation of fields at Sachs and Connor Field. What mm -hmm. are we evaluating there? That's for uh, that's just to get a. It's part of our the the discussion we've had about the pesticide usage and how the how the fields are are uh, performing. We felt it was best to go out there and actually have someone independent go out and evaluate the two fields, so that we could then have a baseline and a marker moving forward. If we were to make a change, we'd have a baseline from an independent party. Um, so that was the thought was to look at the two separate ones, since as we discussed. Um, they're, uh, they're in the same area, but they're treated differently, uh, as we spoke about. So gives us a baseline to move forward, then, then um, depending upon any decisions that are made, then we can track those two fields and see exactly what happens with them going forward. So that was the overall thought. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And Kathleen, as we indicated, you know, I expect memos from Tiger and John and also from the Fields Committee and then Parks and Rec um, will review those those recommendations, I uh, and so that we, we will take it up a month from now at the uh, I think November seventeenth uh, meeting. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions on contracts? We don't we don't approve them. 
we're just reviewing them. That brings us to item 12, selectman's comments. I would make a few comments. One, um, we only had one COVID case over the weekend uh, since last Friday, um, middle-aged person. And um, um, as you know, we're, uh, the, we're starting into budget season. Um, the Board of Finance has sought input from the town council and from the Board of Ed and from myself, and I, I, I thought I ought to offer to you to, if you want to talk to uh, Todd Lavieri um, or to the working group that, that they're, they're looking to put together their guidance document by, uh, by, the, by their next meeting. And um, so we really haven't done much internally on budget yet, but we, we're about to begin that process. And then finally, um, the UN day is Saturday morning um, in front of the town hall. I COVID socially distanced and uh, I don't have anything else, I think. We have no comments from or questions from the public. Any any. Just to, just to Kevin, uh, Kevin, a question on the budget. So just give me a sense of the timeline. So the, when will the um, budget, I guess, was first be brought before the Board of Selectmen? Is that typically in January, is that expected? January, yeah. yeah. I think we start the second or third week in January with our meetings. Um, the January 19th is the first uh, Board of Selectmen budget review meeting. Thank you. Nick, got anything? Nothing here. Kathleen, do you? Yep, that'll do. Thank you. Okay, I move we adjourn at uh, 9.03. Second here. Have a good, all right, it's unanimous. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. You too. Thanks, everyone. Thank Cheers. You.